The inventory levels have rebounded to where they were just right before the 4th of July holiday. Our question becomes, how much higher will they go as we have our final push before that summer slowdown? But there's no doubt on the buyer side, you can already feel all well, that summer slowdown. It's already started. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also gonna do a quick interest rate update, and then we're gonna talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker, returned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Buyers beware, because you're going to have to start paying buyer agency fees. If you don't want to be on the hook for paying two and a half to three percent when buying a new house, and take a look at our purchase power plan. In this plan, buyers pay for our services by the hour instead of a percentage of the purchase price. Just like attorneys, this can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and well, want to save a small fortune in fees. Let's jump into the single family market stats. Inventory, it's on the rise. How high is it going to go? That's the only question left. We now have 5,059 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This means we now have 1% more homes on the market today than just 28 days ago. We now have 1,208 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year, but we are still 461 houses short of the levels in 2022. Originally, I thought that we would end up treading the needle between the levels of 2021 and 2023. And I'm thinking I'm going back to that mindset because look at that line. But if you're a buyer, 1,208 more single family houses on the market, that's great news. And we are back by we, I, I mean new listing activity. This week we listed 1,181 single family houses in the state of Massachusetts. This is 175 units or 17.4% more homes than the same week back in 2023. That four week rolling average is 1,019 units. Under agreements were essentially the same as last week, but that all makes sense because the data is the properties that went under agreement during the 4th of July week. The 4th of July landing on a Wednesday, well, it ended up essentially affecting two weeks worth of data. Now this week we put 839 single family homes under agreement. This is 53 units or 6% lower than the same week last year. We put 892 houses under agreement. The four week rolling average is 1,042 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were up by 17% while under agreements were down by 6%. The pending new listing ratio shot up this week. Completely expected. The 162.6% is thanks to the drop off in new listings last week. Now the 162.6% is compared to the 107.1% that we saw this week last year. There were 850 single family homes that closed this week for an average sales price of $875,000 and a median sales price of $675,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 18 units or 2%. There were 832 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of 826 grand. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, but the closer you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now this week, months of inventory jumped to 1.88 months from last week's 1.74 months, again, to be expected. But the 1.88 months this week is compared to the 1.47 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, then I would love to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We now have 2,819 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there is 2.6% less inventory on the market today than the inventory levels of just 28 days ago. We now have 547 more units on the market today than today last year. Five more than compared to the inventory levels of 2022 and seven more units than compared to 2021. If we could only take out last year, then we would really be able to say that inventory levels have remained pretty consistent in those last four years in the condo market. As expected, new listings, they bounced back. There were 560 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 411 units. The 560 units listed was 23 units or 4.3% less than the 537 condos that came on the market this same week back in 2023. Under agreements also leveled out due to the 4th of July holiday landing on a Wednesday. Now this week we put 321 units under agreement. This 321 condo sales was 60 units or 15.8% less than last year. We put 381 condos under agreement. Now that four week rolling average number for under agreements is 440 units. So 4.3% fewer listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 15.8% fewer condos. The condo pending to new listing ratio this week jumped 169.8%. Now we knew this was going to happen. This is compared to the 100.8% that we saw this time last year though. 
There are 371 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $746,000 and a median sales price of $595,000. This same week last year, there are 357 condos that sold to sales levels. They were up by 4%. Months of inventory, that increased to 2.27 months from last week's 2.09 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.83 months this week back last year. Uh, any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you just hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference to that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you're liking the content and want to hear more about Massachusetts real estate, then please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates, though. This was a great week for interest rates. The market is pricing in a bigger and bigger chance for a rate cut in September from the Fed. And by the way, take a look at what the market's doing anything real estate stock wise. And by the way, I personally have been very thankful for this one. But anything real estate stocks, it's on the rise. But let's just quickly analyze the why. The market is expecting the rates are going to be cut and that's going to fuel real estate sales. In other words, it's going to push more demand into the marketplace. So if you're a potential home buyer, when you hear more demand, then you should be preparing yourself for ding, 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 higher prices. Now, I know potential home buyers are championing lower interest rates, but remember that those lower interest rates will be at the cost of higher prices. Last week, I talked about how much it sucked here in Massachusetts being a first time home buyer. Now, I'm not retracting that in any way, shape, or form, but I am going to point out that all things do end up finding, well, some type of balance. Check this out. According to Forbes, Massachusetts is ranked as the number one state in the country for average salary. The average salary here is $80,329. Now, the average salaries are followed by New York, then Washington, and then California. Notice anything about all those other states? They have higher housing costs as well. A higher salary equals higher living costs. Good news, well, kind of. Being number one in salary didn't mean we were number one in housing costs, though. Nope, we actually ranked number three in the country for a median housing price of $587,875. And this is behind California in the number two spot with a median price of $743,000 and then Hawaii in that number one spot at 837 grand. We thought we were bad. We were ranked number four for the highest rental costs and a median price of $1,806. Ranked number three for housing costs, which actually accounts for rental and homeowners at $1,960 per month. We are ranked as the number three most expensive for healthcare at $12,754 a year. <laughs> Thanks for that one, Mitt. Oh, and then we were the number three for highest average income tax at $7,105 per year. We could thank a lot of people over on Beacon Hill for that one, but we were barely behind New York in the number two spot and then the highest average tax burden goes to Hawaii. Man, living in paradise is expensive. And by paradise, I mean Hawaii, not Massachusetts. And real quick, because maybe it will be nice to hear it from someone else other than me, don't expect home prices to go down anytime soon. As the seller's market persists throughout most of the United States, prices continue to rise and affordable housing appears to be slipping through the fingers of the average American. Jessica Lance says we're actually forecasting that home prices will continue to grow based on the lack of inventory and demand for home ownership. And I just love this quote. If mortgage rates did come down significantly, that could also create more bidding wars as more buyers into the market. And then she says, I think those two to 3% rates were a once in a lifetime experience. And I would not expect to see that again anytime soon. But if you look at rates historically, we are still at the low end. And then the founder of Rad Diversified, which is a real estate investment trust in Tampa, awesome name by the way, he must watch my videos because he said, I don't believe home prices are eventually going to take a large drop like they did in 2008. We have a lot more regulation now and a lot less loose lending. I don't think we're going to see any market crash or slowdown. Now I've said all of this before, yes, in all different videos here and there, but interest rates are not going down to the two to 3% range. The federal government would never allow a mass foreclosure crisis again. So 2008, that's not happening anytime soon. Precedent was set during COVID. Lending standards have remained extremely high compared to the, oh, <laughs> you've got a heartbeat? Cool, here's a half million dollars to buy a property standards of 2006 and 2007. Home prices, they're going up. Now I understand there's a lot of wishing by potential buyers that they're going to go down and I get it. I wake up every morning wishing that the million dollar ferry will just drop a bag at the doorstep of my house. But just because I'm wishing for it to happen doesn't mean it's going to happen. 
That's reality. It's tough to face, but just because it's difficult doesn't mean it isn't the truth. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Chef Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house the next night or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.